Boom, you see. Kumanaki you Lodi know, from, how to describe this place, an Islamic boarding school in Bosnia. You may be thinking, Jeff, what the heck are you doing in an Islamic boarding school in Bosnia? Don't worry about it, boys. All right, I'm just doing things. Speaking of things, I'm going to be doing yoga. Kind of yoga. I'm going to be doing my own stretching routine. Um, the reason being, I was on a massive flight to get here. Then I've been on a huge walk around the city. I did those flies yesterday. My chest has been incredibly tight all day since then. And really I thought to myself, I should do some yoga. You know, I feel very tight, very sore. So that's what I'm doing. Hope everyone's having a good day. Get some exercise in yourself. And no matter what you're doing, but you're doing it with love. Spend that time with your loved ones. It's a really deep stretch on this quad. It's very tight. Sometimes, boys, you might need to take a long time to do a particularly elongated oh, stretch. On one body part. Just turn that off, otherwise the fans rattling the way in the background. Feels good. Walking around all day, sitting down for a lot of the day as well. This looks very good. Doing this type of stretching. I find it to be very therapeutic, um, especially when your body is sore, as you've been in a static position for a long period of time, pulling your muscles apart in the stretch position. I'm going to do that again on this side. Because I didn't feel like it. There we go. I wasn't feeling like I was quite getting the depth needed. You can turn a little bit so you guys can see. Oh, I'm fall over whilst trying to show you. I'm stretching all my quad here is especially where I'm feeling it. This feels very good. Both my quads feel very, very tight. So this will be massively useful. I'm really pulling this quad. Treadmill, no shoes on, and then we did hill sprints. Uh, well, I did hill sprints for 10 minutes. The way I did it is I started off at the speed of five on the treadmill for the first minute. Sorry, four on the treadmill for the first minute, 4.5 for the second, five for the third, 5.5 for the fourth, six for the fifth. 6.5 the 7th, 7 the 8th, 7.5 for the 9th, and then 8. And I think it was in uh, miles per hour, maybe. So essentially, I was going up by half a mile per hour every minute. Um, so by the, end of, by the end of that, when I was going up the full 8, I was really just all out sprinting and you might be thinking Jeff eight miles per hour is not that fast. Oh it's on a massive incline. Eight miles per hour is is balls to the wall. Or at least for me, whatever eight represented on the treadmill was balls to the wall, sweating, grunting, 
um, treadmill rocking with each step so I'm just hammering it up there. Sometimes that's what that's what you need to do. You gotta sort the types of equipment I had access to and keeping in mind the style of training that I've been doing already. I couldn't really do much else on my chest. I don't want to injure myself. I couldn't do much else on my biceps. I already worked the biceps the day before. Well, yeah, so I thought to myself, what can I do? Do the hill sprints. Now I didn't record them. There were three kids in the gym. Maybe like 12, 13 years old. I don't want to be the guy that puts children on cameras and uploads it to YouTube. I don't want to record anybody and put them on YouTube. Let alone like I mean, especially kids though, that's I wouldn't like it if my kids were uploaded on some guy's fitness channel without my permission, so I wouldn't want to subject any children to that either. They may notice that I'm going for two rounds on each leg. It's intentional. The reason being is I'm basically getting a nice deep stretch for the first time. I'm really pulling the leg apart. And then, once I swap over, I'm allowing the muscle to rest. And then when I put it back in that elongated position, I'm going for a deeper stretch. So it's stretched, goes to rest, and has a chance to come back together. Then, once it comes back together, it's still a bit loose, and then when I do the second stretch, it'll pull it apart even more. Kind of like a balloon. You blow a balloon, and that first breath, you might only inflate the balloon to about that big. And then the second breath, third breath. The idea being that the more breaths you put into the balloon, the bigger the balloon will inflate. It's the same scenario with stretching. The first round of stretching, you may be very tight. Look at me now. So right now, I can barely reach under my foot. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm, I'm putting my hand under my foot with one straight leg. I can barely do it. Um, on the next round, I bet I'll be able to put my hand all the way down to my heel, which I can't do at the moment. So we'll see. Um, yeah, because each round, you just aim to get a little bit deeper into the stretch, basically. This one's especially tight. Still can't reach the ball of my foot, the heel of my foot. Maybe I can. I can't, but I can get my whole hand under my foot, which I couldn't do the first time I did the stretch. So maybe if I did four or five rounds, eventually I'd be able to get my whole hand down to touch the heel of my foot. That's the point of stretching. On the first blow of the balloon, you don't really make that much progress. The second blow, you make a lot more. By the time my third blow comes around, it's clear sailing. I've got a big inflated balloon. I'm going to do is I'm going to do my standing stretches first. And afterwards, my seated stretches. I'm doing, I think this is one over one. I'm 
keeping my hips in a line, basically. Um, and now what I'm doing, planting my one foot to the ground like this, on this leg, and on this, oh, what are you doing it? And on this leg, I'm pointing my toes forward like this. So this is how my feet are positioned. And then I'm bending my knee, and in doing so, I'm stretching out this area of my leg. I'm kind of pulling on the groin, creating a stretch movement. Especially if you've been sitting down a lot and you've had your legs quite closed and condensed, doing this type of opener. Feels really good. And a nice equal line between my legs. Put this one foot with one foot, pointing forward, this other foot to the side, and I'm leaning in with this forward foot creating space in this part of my leg and that's it and I'm just getting a nice stretch here really if you've been sitting down all day this is a brilliant pose to do mm. I'll do two just for argument's sake I'll do don't do everything else so far, so I'm going to have to do two of this. Well, it felt like I need, it feels like I needed to. Sometimes you don't even realise what you need until you do it. Yeah, you know, fuck me, I needed that. You know, sometimes you, you go on a run and you get back and you're just like, oh, I needed that. You don't realise you needed it until you did it, and then you're like, oh, my body, my soul, I, everything that makes up myself needed that. I'm trying not to talk too loudly because obviously I don't want to distract anybody or make too much noise. Space my legs, both my toes pointed forward like this. I'll come down and I'm going to plant my hands on the ground. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up my hands, twist them upside down like this, and I'm going to walk my hands backwards. Just get a nice pull in the midsection of my back and especially on my hamstrings. A little bit on my thighs as well, actually. Maybe on the insides of your wrists as well. Slight bending in one knee to the other knee. That's okay if I tend to. Just to ensure you create maximum space on those hamstrings. Yeah, when you're stretching, don't be afraid to adjust your positioning. Sometimes you might not get it right the first time. For example, when you do this, you might not get it right. You might need to hug it down. When really you squeeze, you, know, you don't realize what you're doing sometimes until you're doing it. Now, what I'm going to do keep my legs straight, put my toes together like this, and then I'm going to bend down and I'm going to touch my toes with straight legs. This should be pretty easy if you've been doing those poses properly. Like I have. This shouldn't be too difficult. The reason being is you've warmed up predominantly your hamstrings now. 
but also your quads and your calves. You create a movement in your hips. And we're really enable yourself to be able to do this by doing those preliminary stretches. driving, if you're driving all the time, which I do a lot of, this and those feet that are constantly touching the pedals makes all the difference. So I'm not going to do two rounds of this one because I don't think I need it. stretch I wanted, adjusted, now I have. Okay. Now what we're going to do is either grab a wall near you or something that you can just put your hand against, like this basically. Okay, what you're going to do is open up your chest, make sure your arm is nice and straight on and stuff, and twist the leg. Twist away from wherever you're holding on to in that direction and get a nice pull on the inside of your chest here. And then a little stretch starting with here, my belt loop, going all the way down my pectoral, all the way down the front, just past my nipple. That's what it feels to me. And that's a great feeling. Yeah, my chest is very sore. Might be why. It's coming from this side's very sore. Especially where the soreness is coming from, gives you a good indication of why. So, so for me, I'm getting the soreness here, and then line straight down, straight across my pectoral here. Going down, and then it kind of stops about there. So it's predominantly this area. And I know when I was doing my chest yesterday, I felt as I was doing the contraction, I felt the contraction occurring here in my chest. So it makes sense, therefore, that this is where I'm experiencing the most. Let's do it again on the other side. 
I was going to do a couple more. So we all know this, it's absolutely classic. I think I'll, I'll do it from the back. So one arm like this, other arm, grab it, wrap your fingers all the way down that tricep, and then pull. Don't pull it all the way down here and hold yourself, but keep your elbow kind of against the back of your head. And just Helps as I'm doing now. You can walk your hand down your back. Just look at location. Tricep, grabbing it, pulling it down a little, make sure that elbow is against the back of the head, and then if necessary. Okay. Mm -hmm. to make me so tired. It's about 9 9.30 here. I've been awake since 2.30 a.m. And it's 9.30 p.m. now, so tired. I'll keep going for a bit longer. I've only got one more stretch to do right now. This last stretch I'm going to do is quite difficult to hold, so if you get any pain, don't do it. There are two ways you can get into it, so essentially a stretch will be this. But you can only get into it by, as I just did, Putting your hands down here, squeezing, contracting, and pinching your shoulder blades, and then lifting the bum. That's one way. Another way is kind of trying to catch yourself like that, and then lifting yourself up like this. Open your arms, fully extended. Puff your chest out and try and keep those arms up. And this is a weird one. But what I'm doing here, getting my stretch in front of my chest, my deltoids are getting stretched out in a pretty strange way that they're not normally. My triceps are being engaged, my biceps are being stretched out. If you can look at my bicep, being extended. Um, my shoulder blades are being contracted in a very strange way. That you never normally do. You know, it's very rare that your shoulder blades are going to be squeezed together like this. Nice. That's it, boys. Now, of course, you can change the stretching to do what you need it to do, but that's a pretty generic stretch routine that you can do. You've got power in your legs, you're spreading up a lot as well through your back, through your upper body. Doing stuff like that will really just open up the different areas of your body. Make you feel good. Yeah, I feel great now. I'm ready. I'm gonna go to sleep as soon as I turn that off. I'm back on YouTube. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching, boys. Appreciate you all. Hasta mañana. I'll see you all tomorrow. Adios, mis gringos.